I'm here with uh, Professor Jesu Dayson and he's uh, just about to go into the Employment's Appeal Tribunal. So can you tell me why you're here today? Yes, because um, I've raised concerns in patient interest about the mistreatment of children, but also the mistreatment of one of my colleagues, Mr Shaban Ahmed. And what I've said all along is that that issue in particular has been covered up. And I brought that matter to the attention of regulators, the trust, and ultimately the media when they failed to act. The trust reaction has been to denigrate me in every way, throw the kitchen sink at me, refer me to the GMC, etc. And I've sought protection from the Employment Tribunal to try and address that. I took that case to the Employment Tribunal in Liverpool and they found I was a whistleblower but didn't afford me protection, particularly for the disclosures to the media, where I was escalating the most, most serious concerns about cover-up. They do need to take those issues seriously. Those concerns were well-founded. Uh, they should have gone to the media because they haven't been addressed and I should have been afforded protection for them. I've been in almost continuous litigation since about 2011 and I blew the whistle on the cover-up in my colleague's case in 2009. So that gives you some appreciation of quite how long this has been going on. Many people will know that I've been pursued by the BMA for costs in a case that they've run against me since 2013. And we had a hearing on that in 2016 and judgment on that is still awaited. So it's a punishing battle when no one seems to want to actually look at the issues about cover-up that I raised, and that are well evidenced, the documents are all there. It's not a way in which I wanted to spend my career, it's had a negative impact on me, my family, but I have to say I'm extremely grateful to the support of them and a number of uh, friends and uh, colleagues throughout my career, from school all the way onward, who've been pivotal in supporting this campaign to try and do something better about this. This isn't about um, trying to get back at people, this is trying to do this better. If regulators know that whistleblowers will be protected to go to the media, they'll have a better interest in actually sorting things out before that stage. At present, they don't. I'm here with Dr Chris Day and we're both here to support uh, Professor Jesu Dayson. So Chris, why, why is it important we support this case? Well. The Jesse Dayson case um, is a whistleblowing case about Older Hay Hospital in Liverpool and um, Professor Jesse Dayson, when he was working there, was um, a surgeon responsible for doing unique and difficult procedures on children um, and he's no longer doing those procedures so that is a massive loss to the NHS and his whistleblowing case is about finding out why that happened, why has a surgeon lost his career. And what I find staggering about this case, without getting into the rights or wrongs of it, is that an employment judge in Liverpool has decided that he can make important decisions on this case without seeing the whole report, the whole Royal College of Surgeons report, into the important issues in this case. Not only did he not see the whole report, I think it's possible he didn't see at least 50% of the report. That is to say, over half, or certainly near half of the report, was blacked out. The other thing to say is when Professor Jesu Dayton asked the employment judge to see the entire report, made an application formally requesting that at least, if the report isn't made public, at least the judge is able to see the report, that application was denied. So this tribunal today is about looking at how this Liverpool Employment Tribunal has made decisions in this case. Um, and there's other problems with it. There's several grounds of appeal, but the, the, the one that's most easy to understand is this blacked out report. How can you make decisions on child safety, serious allegations about child safety without seeing the whole report? And I think the public would be staggered to think of some judge taking it upon themselves to make a decision like that without seeing all the facts. And that's what this appeal is really about. And this report may well have indicated all the concerns raised by Professor Jesu Dayson? Well, we don't know. We can't take sides. We don't know what's in the report. Um, but I think judges need to explain very, very clearly in this case why they don't need to see the whole report. Do you have any comment on the role of the British Medical Association with, with this case? Well, I, I think most people are with me when they would agree with me that it's wrong for a trade union to sue someone um, a whistleblowing doctor trying to do the right thing um, who has already lost his house. I don't think there's more to it than that.
Okay, well, uh, thanks for speaking to us and good luck today.